Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Business cards, newsletters, invitations, brochures. Whenever I need something printed that's quick and easy but still looks professional, believe it or not, I do it myself. All it takes is a printer, some planning, and a program like Microsoft Publisher. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I made this name badge using a regular printer, like the one you have at home or at work, and a special kit that comes with everything you need, including the paper and these little plastic holders. In this video, we're going to take a look at more examples like this one while we talk about the different things you need to consider before you begin your publication. Planning ahead is important, especially if you're new to desktop publishing. Why? Well, from personal experience, I can tell you that things don't always turn out the way you thought they would. Sometimes it takes a little foresight. Sometimes it's a matter of choosing the right materials. And sometimes you just have to be honest with yourself about what your printer can and can't do. But don't worry. Designing and printing your own quality publications is easy. You just have to take it one step at a time. The first thing on your list should be your layout. In other words, what you want your publication to look like. You probably already have an idea based on the project itself. For example, a large poster or a small folding brochure. It's important to think about this in advance because it has an impact on printing and assembly later. Here are some tips to help you get started. If you're using Publisher or even another program like InDesign, you might want to start with a template. A template can help you pinpoint things like the right size and orientation for your project, the margins, and the way your content should be laid out. Sometimes it helps to print a test copy or put together a mock-up on paper. This is the first thing I do if my publication is going to be double-sided or folded because otherwise it can be hard to picture the final product. One more tip. It might be worth it to buy special materials for your project, like these prepackaged labels. If that's something you plan to do, make your choice early on. That way you can use this model number to find a template. Planning doesn't stop when you finish choosing a layout, though. You still have a wide range of paper and print options to consider, which can have a big impact on the design process. Basically, it's time to start thinking about what your publication is going to look like when you actually print it. First, make sure you use the same size paper as your publication layout. That's why it's important to plan ahead. Otherwise, you're likely to be disappointed with the way it fits on the page. Think about using something other than standard white paper. For example, things like greeting cards or this invitation usually use a heavier paper called cardstock, which has more weight and structure than regular paper. See how it works? You should also decide whether you're going to print in black and white or in color. Color ink is expensive and can run out quickly if you're working on a large project. As an alternative, printing in black and white on colored paper is a great way to save money but still make your publication stand out. Finally, if you're new to desktop publishing, I recommend printing a test page early in the design process so you can see what your printer is capable of. If you're unhappy with the results, you can always adjust your print settings or start making plans to use a professional printer. There's one more thing to keep in mind when planning your publication, assembly and delivery. In other words, what happens after you hit print? Sometimes it's as simple as removing your project from the printer tray. At other times, there's a little more work involved. Here are some tips. Always check with your post office if you're going to be doing any bulk mailing. There may be pricing options or restrictions in your area that you'll want to know about beforehand. Make sure you set aside time and materials to do things like cutting, folding, and stapling your publication. Unfortunately, this is the one thing publisher can't do for you, but special equipment like a paper cutter can help. Things like this just take time, whether you're separating the paper or assembling the holders, so having someone to help you can make all the difference. It takes time to put together any type of publication, from planning your layout to choosing the right paper. But with a little foresight and some of the tricks we've talked about today, you can create professional publications at home or at work.